Hey, I can't afford it. I don't got any money. My wallet's empty. Whatever you're pitching me, I can't afford right now, right? You guys are used to hearing this on a consistent basis. How many of you right now are sitting there thinking, dude, I just heard that yesterday, right? As an insurance agent, as a brand new insurance agent, I used to hear this a lot. I want to diagnose why you're getting, I can't afford it. Limited budget, no budget, whatever, right? And I want to first start out by saying, I'm going to give you some responses as we dive into the video. I'm going to get you to think a little differently about the response first of all though. So first thing I want to talk through is homeless people have money. I can't afford it is not an excuse that you can't overcome, number one. Number two, it's not an excuse that's actually ever factually true, right? Now, if you're pitching them something that's, you're trying to sell them a, a, a $1,000 a month life insurance policy, there are people that maybe financially can't afford it. However, if they're telling you this and they don't even know how much it costs yet, then there's a problem, right? There's a disconnect because there's something that you have that they probably could afford, even though they're saying it. However, a lot of people, that's their first instinct. That's their first response. When, when they can't, when, when, when they wanna push back a little bit and, and keep you from selling them, it's human nature for them to say something like, I can't afford it, right? So, so one of the things that I love to do is to be agreeable. When someone's like, hey, I can't afford it, I want to I want to understand that they probably don't mean what they're actually saying, right? Because I've had thousands of people over the years that have said exactly this and I've still got them to choose something, an option, a policy, and actually be able to buy in that moment, right? Because what what you need to understand is I really believe that the biggest key to closing deals, the biggest key to closing, you're taking notes right now as you should be, the biggest key to closing deals is you need to believe that they're going to buy every single time or they won't. You see, well, that seems pretty, pretty vague, pretty simple, right? Well, the psychology of it is if there's a moment that you think it's okay for someone to not do business with you, then there's gonna be a lot of times in the future where people are not gonna do business with you. <clears throat> if you think that financial reasons are a, the biggest reason or a big reason why people don't buy insurance, and there's going to be a lot of people in the future that are going to have financial limitations that you're going to allow off the hook and they're not going to buy from you. Also, when it comes to this too, is the more you start to think that there are scenarios and situations where individuals, it's okay for you to not close them, you're going to start to justify future situations and appointments and sales opportunities and you're going to end up not closing them. That's why I firmly believe that there's a deal to be had every single time. There's a sale to be made every single time. And some of you can be like, you do, that's a little extreme. The point is, the reason why I'm, I'm saying it and I, and I actually believe it is when I don't believe it, it affects my mindset. It affects my mental fortitude. It affects my aggressive closing nature. And then I'm gonna allow myself off the hook when I don't close deals. So if I go into every deal expecting to close a deal every single time, my closing rate will naturally go up because of that. So if someone's like, hey, I, I can't afford it. If it's, or there, there's two different segments of, of this that we wanna talk through, by the way. The first one is, is it early, like on a call, or early in the presentation before you've actually given quotes? Okay, if that's true, then this is something that they naturally say to people. This is something that they'd say so that salespeople stop trying to sell them. And if they're saying it to you, and you're just like, well, crap, let me go find someone who can afford it. You don't even, they don't even know how much it costs yet. It's like someone saying, eight seconds into the call, I'm not interested, but they don't know what you're calling about. They don't, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not interested. You don't, they don't even know why you're calling. How would they know if they're actually interested yet or not? Right, a lot of this is psychology. A lot of this is, hey, they're going to have defense mechanisms. They're going to have reactionary responses. They're going to put their hands up and they're going to have semi objections and complaints and excuses about things that you say. Like when I walk into Best Buy and I may not give them a, a specific excuse, but kind of, and I'm like, hey, you know, and they're like, hey, sir, how can we help you? And we say naturally, 
You, 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 I don't need any help. I'm just looking. I'm just shopping, right? And then I'll literally walk 50 steps and I'll stop and say, now where are the uh, TVs at? They just asked me if I needed help literally 20 seconds before, but I walked and then I thought about it and then I was like, well, actually, I should have said I'm looking for a TV instead of I'm not looking, I'm just shopping, right? So if you think about why you're getting I can't afford it, put it into two different two different buckets. I'm getting it early and it's natural for them to say it. I, I would be agreeable and ignore and move past that, number one, okay? So if I, I can't afford it, um, you know, I understand there's a lot of things I can't afford either, right? So I'm gonna walk through and show you what typically our clients can't afford, okay? So tell me this, before we get started, what got you thinking about this, right? That's a good natural response to the objection at hand that we're talking through that you can have early, early in a call early in an appointment, early in a virtual cell, early in a Zoom, early in someone's home that you can respond to. Now, if it's later on in the cell, and you've actually, because, because if it's early, you need to agree, be a very agreeable. Do not, do not actually give any validity or credibility to it. Don't even listen to it and totally flip and ignore it, okay? What I just said, you need to write down, you need to rewind, you need to write down, you need to practice, you need to role play it, and when you get that response, right, because I don't have it written down in front of me, none of this, right? So when, 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 when that happened and I said it to myself, I just came up with the most logical thing to say in that moment, right? When you get that and someone says, I can't afford it, what are you saying and, and how logical is it and how prepared are you to actually respond appropriately? Because a lot of us are missing deals constantly and it's because Maybe we don't have a, a mentor or a trainer or we don't have someone physically helping us or telling us what to say or you're just absorbing some of our free content and you're still learning, but then you're not going and actually putting it into action, right? There was a speaker that spoke at 8% that talked about take action now. A lot of us, when we hear something like this, we need to actually take action on it to make sure that we apply it so that we continue to improve and get better or what's the point in spending 10 minutes with me on video if you're not gonna take a nugget and use it? If you're not gonna write it down, if you're not gonna apply it, if you're not gonna take it seriously, and it's not gonna affect the future months and years that you start to hear more of this, right? So we've talked about initially, I can't afford it, how do you respond, okay? I've talked through it. Now, let's move to the, to, to the end, right? I'm in the close, I show them options, and then they're like, you know what, I, I, I can't afford it, you know? I completely understand. And I, I'm used to hearing that, and there's certain things that I can't afford either, right? So, so tell me, before I show you additional options, what do you believe that you probably could afford, right? Apparently $100 a month, you feel is too much, right? Because what's happening is e either, either they had a figure in their mind that's lower that they may accept, or the relationship is there, is not there, because there's, there, there's really three things that need to be there at the, end, at the end to close. The relationship. Okay, is the relationship there or is it not there? If it's not there, I don't care if it's a dollar. They're not gonna do it if they don't know, like, and trust you, they don't find common ground and they, and they don't have a relationship with you, okay? Or they, don't just, they just don't wanna do business with you. Maybe it's you, okay? The second is the value. When you are identifying the problem, solving the pain point, fact finding, and actually diving deeper into the issue, were you, were you building the value in the solution? Do they see value in what you're selling? Do they even want what you're selling, right? And if you believe that the relationship is there and the value is there, then the third thing is there's gotta be so much certainty in the close that you're confident they're going to be buying that you're, you're not using words like, I think you're gonna do it, I, I, you're probably gonna like it, maybe you'll, maybe you'll want this, right? A lot of people have problems with using those, those negative words that create doubt in the close that we're using that we shouldn't be using and, and, and I want you to stop that right away. Start to think about the words that you're using towards the end of an appointment, I promise you, it's not them. Typically it's not them saying, hey, I, 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 I don't wanna buy this, a lot of times it's us. And, and not realizing that we're using words at the end that are affecting our ability to close a sale. I think this is the right policy for you is not something you should be saying. Miss Betty, I'm 100% certain this is the answer for you. It's the policy for you. It checks all the boxes. You need it, you want it, you can afford it. And I'm gonna help you get it right now, right? I'm not even asking, I'm telling, right? You see that, okay? So when you get that, I can't afford it, right? Is it that they can't afford it? Is it that they want a lower option? Is it that, that, that you, created doubt with the way you spoke? Is it the relationship or the value was weak? Or is it that they actually want what you have to sell? And it's okay to ask, by the way, right? I like to get people's attention. Now, I've shown you three options. You, you clearly need it and you want it, and you're trying to figure out if you can afford it in this moment. Do you, 
If we can find something that makes sense, that helps you, and that solves the major problem for you, which obviously you would like for us to do, then I'm guessing if we show you something that fits your budget and that you can afford, that you would move forward with it immediately, wouldn't you? Right? That's a response in the close when you're trying to gauge someone's, not really their, 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 their I'm, I'm, I'm really gauging their intent level in that moment. Right? So I want you to start to think about it. When you start to get these different types of objections, like I can't afford it, when are you getting it? Why do you think you're getting it? And how can you physically address it when you get it? Hey, if you love this, you're like, man, I want, to, I want 2021 to be better than 2020 was. I got seven steps that you need to apply right away. Check out the video. They're in there. See you over there. If you want to make $221,520 next year in 2021, I'm going to show you the seven steps that you need to master.